What's up guys, Mark from Beyond the Real here and today we're going to be talking about Mayan Season 3 Episode 10. Finally, you know, it's the finale and I gotta say, this one was kind of a letdown. I was expecting more, yeah, I was expecting more from this. I was expecting a little more action, you know, to be taking place, you know, on the finale at least. But I can say I will really rate this episode out of 10, I would rate it at least a 6. It was decent, it was, it was good. You know, it's a good finale, but it wasn't great, which I wanted it to be. Uh, you know, we get to see what's going on with Angel, with uh, him and Nails in the beginning. Uh, Easy, you know, he's ready to go and be with Gabby, but, you know, Gabby ends up going uh, to talk to uh, Felipe, and Felipe tells her, you know, you need to get out before something that happens to you because it happened to me it happened to my wife and you know the good ones end up gone and you know she Gabby finally understood that and she she got the message and easy he gets there this is later on in the episode and basically easy is not going to Lodi with uh, Gabby and hopefully I hope you don't see that storyline again. You know, it was good in the beginning to see something, uh, it, it was something fresh, something new, besides the Emily uh, love angle. Now we got, we got to see, you know, Gabby's side. But, you know, it's, it doesn't work for me. And it, it, it just doesn't work. Uh, we got stuff going on with Taza also. Taza and Paolo, they have their beef going on, which ends up getting resolved this, uh, this on this episode. And it happened pretty, it pretty fast. I thought it was going to be, you know, a little more, I guess, dramatic, but it ended quickly. Uh, Paolo's sister ended up calling Taza to come in, and he came. I thought it was kind of dumb too. It was like a Star Wars thing, how Darth Vader had everything planned out. But uh, in Empire Strikes Back, it, it was kind of like that, and Taza was set up, and Paolo was gonna kill him. He put the the tarp out and everything, so you know, blood goes everywhere. But turn, turned out, Paolo's sister ends up killing him, and that's the end of that storyline. I I hope it is. I hope they don't you know bring another storyline. Uh, another thing that happened that was closed was Adelita's story. Adelita's storyline. I didn't like throughout the season. I thought it didn't need to be there. That was like a like a D storyline that didn't need to be there, but it was. And it's just like whatever. It's like I wanted it to end, but clearly at the end of the episode, which I'll get to, it did not end. We're probably gonna see more about Alita in season four. Uh another thing, what else? Yes, Emily ends up finding out what, you know, she put the pieces together. Uh, that basically Miguel tried to kill her and we see what happens with that later on in the episode as well uh, Potter ends up warning uh, Miguel that you know they're coming for you you need to get out of there basically and it's basically it Potter was saying that you know he's not done yet I'm guessing Potter is going to use Miguel for something else or that, I'm really, really honestly, that's the only thing I could really think of that Potter needs him for is to use him for, you know, something of his angle. Uh, Coco. We got to see the resolution of Coco's storyline. I was glad we got to see it. You know, at the beginning it was it was good, but overall as a story, I think it dragged on too long. I wish it didn't drag out as much as it did. It didn't need to be that long, but it was. But uh, we get to see Gilly. He ends up going to save Coco and finally it's done we he shoots isaac in the neck gets hope and then get out of there and i'm hoping that isaac is dead and he's not gonna come back because yeah he got shot in the neck they could probably patch that up but i i hope not because you, you can do that <laughs> uh we also see, you know, it, it, this is the start of the war, really, the civil war between the mines, or really the mines, and the different charters of the mines, and at the beginning of the episode, we see Easy, Easy, Angel, and Gilly, they're, you know, in the car, they're, it looks like they're in a parking garage, and they're waiting on Ganche to get there, and, uh, to, uh, I guess, one of their body shops, uh, he's waiting for Ganche to get there. And they they decided, you know what, we're gonna send, we're gonna blow them up with C4. And 
as Conche is getting out of the, uh, get going into the body shop, he goes back to a vehicle and he gets his son out. So, you know, Angel, I feel like Angel is probably my favorite character at the moment. He's getting more emotional, you know, towards kids because of his own son. So now he's starting to feel that. And, you know, Easy's like, you know, we find out later that he says, you know, I'm, it's, I'll get to that. But uh, they decide, you know, we're not going to do it with the kid in there or at, at least till the kid's out of range. So Easy goes down there. He tries to, he's snooping through the windows and he sees that Ganche and his son are at least uh, like this far apart, at least. And he, Ganche ends up seeing him and they, he pulls the trigger. And we, we are to think that Kanche is dead. But we find out later that he's not. Uh, uh, as, also, as Miguel is leaving, right? Because he's going on the helicopter, he has to get out of there. They're, you know, taking over his assets. They're taking over everything because, you know, he, they're, they're looking for him and they're trying to take him down. Uh, and then you got the other cartel leader that we're probably going to see next season again. Uh... It's just, Miguel, I, there was only probably two episodes that I really found him interesting in, you know, his story about his mom. That never even got resolved either. So, you know, that's going to be a whole other storyline later on. We also got a new storyline. I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of new because you got Nestor and you got Alvarez because Nestor was supposed to kill Alvarez if he didn't go with the through with the plan to kill Easy, and clearly Alvarez is loyal to the Mayans. He's not loyal to uh, Miguel, and it looks like Nestor has flipped the script, and he is now on Alvarez's side. And I believe that he might become a Mayan, and that's actually pretty cool. I, I didn't really think of that. You know, Nestor is the kind of guy you you want because he's loyal. He's gonna do what you need him to do. He's gonna go through with the plan to the fullest. And I think he would be a good sergeant in arms. I feel like he probably would be a good member of the Santo Padre Club. I, I would totally go for that. I wanna see that. And you know, Alvarez just, you know, he can go back to Cal, uh, Northern Cali, go be with the Mayans there. He can stay here and maybe he takes over Bishop's spot. I don't know. But Alvarez, I really do feel like he's more interesting when he's doing more with the Mayans. So hopefully we get to see more of that as well. And you know, Miguel basically has nothing anymore because Emily ends up leaving in two. She gives him the ring, their wedding ring, and the pills that <laughs> that he used to try and kill her. And so Miguel's basically, we're gonna see what happens with him next season, but he's basically, he just up and left. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite scenes of this episode is the chemistry between Emily and Easy in uh, Easy's RV. It was great. You know, this is the first time I actually felt like it, it, it felt right. You know, it didn't feel like it was forced. It felt like the chemistry has grown. And I was glad that they had that conversation. I want to see Easy and Emily together now. I want to see, you know, the, the Jax and Tara thing. I want to see that. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see Gabby and Easy. It, it, it's not interesting, you know, it, it, it's just not. And, you know, Gabby's gone. I hope she stays gone. You know, her, it was like a little fling with Easy, and that was it to make him forget a little bit, but he has to come back to reality reality, and see that this is his life, and this is going to be his life. Emily knows the life, she knows what she's getting into. And that's why I feel like they're better connected. That, that whole dialogue was my favorite. Out of the whole episode between them two, it felt so real. They felt connected. Uh, also, the dialogue between Angel and his brother, uh, Angel and Easy, uh, when they're sitting down, when Easy's telling them, you know, I, I might go with Gabby. I might want to go. And that was, you know, that was good too. But I do think they should have. It kind of dragged a while. I think they should have cut it a little, just a little bit, so it won't feel as dragged out as it did. And that's my opinion. I don't know what you guys think about that. But uh, Adelita also, let's go to, towards the end. Her storyline. She ends up going to Potter's house. Before that, she gets one of the officers that uh, was helping Potter too. Uh, gets the information from her. Then she goes to Potter's house and uh, more weird stuff with Potter, like always. But Adelita is going to kill Potter, but 
finds out that her son's still alive. So now she can't kill Potter because Potter's the only person that's able to tell her where her son is and what what she could do. And she might be an informant for him now. She might do something. You never know because just it's something for her son. Uh, Hank is upset, you know, because he's the one who sponsored uh, Steve, and now Steve is gone, and we. Hank is just upset at the nail situation, and he's upset, with, you know, the, it, he, he's not taking it well with Steve's death either. So it's just a lot that's going on with Hank. I, I, I can't take Hank seriously. He doesn't seem like a serious character. I hope he gets more, uh, I, get, I hope he gets developed more in uh, season four, but I just don't, I feel like he's a big, tough guy. That's what I feel like he is. And I mean, hopefully that changes. Hopefully that does change. Uh, we finally get the reveals of Taza ended up going to go talk to Bishop and tell him everything that's been going on. And I'm, I'm assuming everything with the SOA, I'm assuming everything. And he lays the gun out on the table and tells him, you know, do what you gotta do, brother. And you know, he's basically saying, you all, you did this because you're gay. He was gonna say the other word, and I don't wanna say that, but basically that's what it was. And as soon as that, you know, the scene cuts, you hear a gunshot, but you don't know where it came from. It could have came from inside, or it could have been a warning shot from Kanche and the Mayans right outside the gate. And Easy, he sees that. Well, actually, he doesn't see it. He hears it, and you hear the banging on the gate. Easy stands up. Uh, I'm going to quote Dan the Man. Uh, he does a hero pose, which is kind of, it, it was kind of weird. It's kind of... It's like a hero stance, and he's just standing there. It's like, ah, oh, come on. I, I felt like that should have been in the finale, and it would have been even better. So, you know, just wrap up storylines and, you know, end the, uh, the season with the one king. You know, end, end it like that, but they chose not to. So, hopefully on the first season, uh, the first episode of season four, we get the whole thing resolved in the first episode and get rid of some of the storylines that are still lingering from season three. But overall, like I said, this was a uh, six for me. It was a good episode. It, it wasn't a great finale. There's better finales out there. So hopefully, you know, they, they get better. And I know it was a new uh, writer uh, because Kurt Sutter is not there anymore. I wish he was, but, you know, they said they had problems with him. But we'll see what happens with season four. Hopefully there's better writing. Hopefully it's more, it's faster paced and it's not, you know, as, as slow as some of the episodes were. For this season and I gotta say I probably like season two more than season three so but that's my review guys uh, let me know what you guys think on this I'll me and Alex will be, will be back this Sunday and we'll, we will be reviewing Mortal Kombat and probably a couple other things probably the Venom trailer as well so just you know be, be on the lookout for that and yeah guys that's that's it for today make sure you subscribe make sure you hit that like button and come back and check back for more